Hey fellow numismatics, we've got ourselves another box of half dollars. So, um, we won't beat around the bush. This looks like a Loomis box that we've gotten before, and we'll get we'll just dig in. Um, I haven't opened it up at all, so you're right here with me. Let's see if I can open it the standard way. The last time we opened it, we just dropped, dropped it, and the seams popped open. And I don't see any silver on the ends, but uh, we do have a Loomis roll, just like we expected. And let's dig in. The last Loomis box uh, disappointed us on silver. Oh, that doesn't usually happen, sorry. But we found some cool things, some errors. Uh, a huge run of 2006 coins. So maybe we'll have something interesting about this box. Uh, I'm going to go through quickly and look for plaids on the end and then go through a second time a little more carefully just like we did the last time. Which produced the really cool 1982 no FG error. So you never know what you'll find especially if you go through a little slower, look for errors, misprints, anything like that. usually check not just for silver but if there's a really bright rim I take a look at it So I know, I know a lot of people lament that there's no silver to be found in circulation. Um, it's true. I mean, the, the people like us go through these often enough to where silver doesn't accumulate in circulation or it doesn't stay in circulation. But uh, it happens where you'll get a box and you you get a portion of somebody's collection dump. Somebody passed away. Um, you never know who's dumping, for what reason, whether they're looking for beer money or um, an estate liquidates and there's some kind of binding thing where they have to liquidate all, all cash. Uh, somebody might just be getting into their parents' collection and turning it into the bank or spending it on ice cream, who knows. So we've had some luck with bankrolls. I know not everybody has, but we were on a hot streak. And I regret that we weren't filming at that time because it would have made for some incredible YouTube videos. Both, two of the, we, we did one really uh, extraordinary batch came from a bank uh, it was what they were going to send back to the cash, to the armored car company. Another one that we had that had an enormous amount of silver in it was bankrolls, uh, hand-rolled bankrolls that somebody brought back to the bank. It was only $120, and when I heard that, I said, yep, I'll take them all. And then the third time that we had a really good luck, it was straight up a bank box, just like this. So 
it doesn't matter necessarily how they got there. Sometimes customer returns are junk. Sometimes customer returns are silver mine. Um, sometimes bank boxes are junk, and sometimes they're they're silver mines. So I just found a. I noticed put an extra wide rim and an extra bright rim. I found a 1989 San Francisco proof. Uh, it's a little scuffed. You can see scuffs in the field. It's probably not worth much more than 50 cents in this condition, but very cool nonetheless. When you come across a proof, you'll usually find the rim is a little bit wider than the standard circulated pieces. And things like that, they're funny when you go through a bankroll. Somebody physically had to crack open a mint set just to cash that in for 50 cents. On one hand, it makes you cry. On the other hand, we wouldn't have fun doing this if people didn't do stuff like that. Everybody took care of their coin collection. Bankroll hunting wouldn't have any upside to it. guys so our first time through this is just rim checking we found a 1989 San Francisco proof we found a really nice 1974 the rim was so brilliant that I pulled it out and it turned out the rest of the coin was in good shape too and then we did find a piece of silver this is a 40% silver, 1969, Denver. And it's in fairly nice shape. This is a pretty good looking coin. Not a lot of wear, good luster. And we're going to comb through them carefully one more time. See if we find any more uh, clad, or any more silver of the 40 percenters. And anything that snuck by us, or perhaps errors or doubling or anything like that. So we'll be back. All right, it's wrap up time. Here's what we've got, guys. We found a 1969 Denver 40% silver piece. Um, interesting piece. 2003. That is not intended for circulation, so we will File that away for when we start to fill out a newer book. Other interesting pieces. We found two proof coins. The first one is a fairly clean, definitely not a Min State 69 or 70 like it should be, but this is a 1989 San Francisco proof half dollar. And this proof is totally trashed, but it is a proof. I'll hold it up closer so you can see. There's just a little bit of mirroring left up here in the northwest corner. And it's a 1971 San Francisco. I don't know what this thing's life story is, but it has these crimp marks up here on the top. This thing has been through the ringer. But that is an oddball. You shouldn't be finding that in circulation, so I'm going to keep it. Uh, I have a big section here of coins that were in really nice condition. Uh, they're not uncommon years or anything uh, that is mind-blowing or would fetch a big amount in a sale or anything, but they're in, for instance, this 1971. It, it's in really pretty shape. So I'll compare these to what I have. If I've already got two or three really nice ones, I'll toss them back. But when you find them in this kind of condition, it's hard to not set them aside and give them a second look. Here's my 1972s. This 1974. It has a little scuffing on the face on second glance here, but um, the field is very clean. Uh, this is a nice bicentennial. I, I'm starting to keep these bicentennials if they're in 
uh, good condition. This one has a nice luster to it, even though it's got a little wear. It has some cool toning. The lighting isn't really doing it justice, but it's got a little bit of a, a golden glow to it. And then right here, a row of some nice 1980s. I'll compare to what I have. And then toss back the ones that are weaker. And then a couple from the 1990s. Two more uh, different things that we found here. This is in really rough condition, and I acknowledge that, but uh, it is another one of the no FG varieties. I'll do my best to get this to zoom, but I can't make out an FG on this. I might put it under a scope. I've put it under the three and a half magnification. Still couldn't find an FG. I don't know if there's ghosting there or if there's too much corrosion but um, I think it's worth a second look for the 1983 variety. <clears throat> That's a known error for 83, so I'm not out of line hoping and praying for the error. Uh, this one was interesting for the same reason. There is a tiny bit of ghosting on the FG, but I thought I would show you. I'm, I'm gonna go, uh, it will get tossed back. It's not enough to be considered an error or variety. If this die had been polished one more time before it was struck, that would be gone. But it it's there, ever so lightly there. You got a glimpse of the G in the lighting there as I turned it. But anyway, those are some of the interesting f finds that we found in the half dollar box. There are still some cool things that you can find in circulation. You might not strike silver very often, but these boxes are worth doing. If you can get your tellers to order you a box of half dollars, who knows? Maybe you can come home with some silver. Maybe you can find some really cool errors, double dies, uh, rim errors. Who knows? Um, happy hunting. Leave a comment. Click like. Subscribe. And we will keep putting these videos out. Let us know uh, any topics you want to talk about or any boxes you'd like to see us do. And happy hunting. Catch you next time, Anonymai.